A good day becomes a very good day when the office is the Animal Referral Hospital in Sydney and the patient is a much-loved puppy called Lexi, who only hours earlier was just millimetres from death. I thought she was going to die. Yeah. Um, I just broke down in, in absolute tears just seeing that x-ray. Um, it's horrifying, you know. It wasn't a little knife, it was a steak knife. ARH internal medicine vet Dr Jodie Braddock. We got the message that the dog had an esophageal foreign body, but I think the x-ray that was sent over by the referring vet, we were pretty stunned when we saw that. And my first impression was how, how could this even happen? How could this dog manage to eat this exactly. foreign body? She does have a tendency of pinching things and hiding them under the lounge. We just don't know. Mm. That's mm. something we just can't work out. Concerned, they took Lexi to their own vet, Dr Margaret Shimoni from Parramatta Vet Friends. They just knew that the night before it had vomited quite a lot of times and in the morning it was very quiet and not well at all. Like it didn't look actually as sick as you would imagine from the x-ray picture. But then Dr Shimoni saw Lexi's x-ray revealing exactly what the six-month-old Staffy had swallowed, a vicious looking 20 centimetre knife. I thought the nurses were kidding me. <laughs> they showed me the picture because I had to go and do a consult and I was thinking they were kidding me. <laughs> Lexi was quickly referred to ARH for the emergency team there to work out how to save Lexi's life. The hardest part was not to have it slice through tissue as we pu pulled it up. So we had to guard the tip and then um, manoeuvre it so that the blunt edge was... was pulling along the tissue and then the sharp edge was protected by inflating the esophagus and manipulating it very carefully out. So it's a real team effort because, you know, I'm on the end of the endoscope but I need someone very skilled to be able to do the manipulating. So, um, And then the anaesthetist has to make sure that the dog's stable and be ready for a sudden change in its status when um, if something untoward occurs. So we were ready for anything but um, we weren't even sure if it was possible to bring up that way. So, yeah. 45 minutes delicately manoeuvring the steak knife up through Lexi's esophagus and the deadly blade was out. But why would any dog eat a knife rather than food? ARH veterinary dentist Dr Christine Hawke has an idea. But the interesting thing with Lexi was once she'd had her operation to have the knife retrieved, um, being a dental person, the first thing I noticed walking in was not that she'd eaten a knife, but that she had a malocclusion, which is an it's a big word for orthodontic problem. And what had happened is that when she closes her mouth, her lower canines, which are the big fangs in the front, are hitting the roof of her mouth. So every time she closes her mouth, she's biting herself. Um, what we find with these puppies is that it's normal to think if a, if a puppy had a sore mouth that they wouldn't chew a lot, but these puppies actually chew heaps. They'll chew anything they can get their mouth around because whenever they've got something nice and big and hard in their mouth, they don't bite themselves. It stops them so they can chew, but it doesn't hurt. And so. It's, it's very common for us to find that these dogs, even though they have a sore mouth, they are chewing everything in sight. However, after her recent near-death experience, the only things Lexi will be allowed to chew are raw bones and chew toys.